Easy to forget, Alabama won the SEC last season. Easy to forget because this is not the lasting image that we have. The lasting image is Georgia beating Alabama in the national title game. But the Crimson Tide once again entering this season as not only the favorites in the SEC, but the favorites to win the whole shebang. Alabama going to cost you a buck 40 in the SEC. Georgia plus money at plus 140. The defending national champion dogs will meet the media tomorrow in Atlanta. The defending SEC champion Tide meeting the media today. And we will meet a couple of our finest, Dennis Dodd and Bryant McFadden in Atlanta at SEC Media Days. Uh, Dennis, Nick Saban in, in a familiar position as the favorite to win the SEC and to win it all, but a little bit hairier for him this season after all that drama around the comments that he and Jimbo made this offseason. Yeah, a little bit hairier, but I talked to him earlier this morning. They've actually made up, according to Nick, and he used those words, that they're, they're okay. He gave the example of, you know, they used to be in the same room together, uh, the coaching room together, and there'd be arguments in the coaching room. You come out of it, nothing personal. The problem is, this was very personal, Chris, and this was very public. You know that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I asked him that. I said, look, you know, how do you reconcile that? He calls you a narcissist. He calls you a lot of things. <laughs> and Nick maintained that they are, I wouldn't say best of friends, but they have, you know, mutual respect for each other. I guess we'll see. I will say this, BMAC, there's a reason they are not on the same day here at the <laughs> SEC Media Days, but uh, we'll find out in a couple days when uh, when Jimbo's here. Exactly. I, I, I I hear what Nick Saban is saying based on your conversation you had with him, but nah, they're not friends. They're not friends. The respect is clearly there. You know Jimbo respects uh, Nick Saban with all his heart and soul because he gave him opportunities, but clearly when it comes to their situation, the relationship that once was, I don't think it's there anymore. And also, like you mentioned, when I heard Alabama and Saban was going to be here today, I was hoping that A&M and Jimbo Fisher would be here as well. Clearly, they separated the two because they didn't want anything to happen or transpire potentially. But for me, I love it. This adds more spice to college football. Everyone is circling that October 8th date Absolutely. with A&M for a few reasons. Number one, A&M got the best of Alabama a year ago, but because of what transpired throughout the offseason, the NIL uh, you know, uh, conversations and things like that. So I love it for college football. I, would, I, I hope more coaches would do this for us during the offseason. <laughs> more coaches call other coaches narcissists with a God complex. Let's see if we can get that done. Hey, uh, he, he's got probably the best player in college football, Will Anderson Jr., on defense. And the reigning Heisman Trophy winner, maybe the best offensive player in college football, Bryce Young. BMAC, what are the chances that he does what Archie Griffin did back in the 70s and win back-to-back -back Heisman? I don't like his chances for a few reasons, Chris, and here's why. Number one, you look at his highlights, a lot of the guys that are recipients of those passes are no longer there. The experience, the continuity that he had with his top two wide receivers is going to take some time to be able to establish the relationship that he had with those said players. Number two, you don't see Heisman voters tend to vote for a guy that previously won the year before. It doesn't happen. Like you said, Archie Griffin was the last winner to win back-to-back -back Heisman Trophy. So I don't think that will help him when it comes to the, the, the standard of getting there and winning it again because it's very, very difficult for the voters that voted for Bryce Young to do the same thing, especially if the numbers aren't the same as it was during his winning year. Yeah, you touched on all the reasons why he won't win. 41 sacks last year if... Bryce Young doesn't have that mobility. That number is over 50. You know, they won despite all those sacks because he, he was so great. The receiver room isn't as deep as it was. Jamison Williams, obviously, with that injury, we saw what happened to their effectiveness mm -hmm. after he went out in the championship yeah. game. You have to see Jermaine Burton is supposed to be the next guy, but Ja'Cory Brooks is there, still there. But the depth isn't there. I think it's more likely that Will Anderson wins the Heisman if you're just talking about the Alabama roster. Uh, and I asked him about that today. I said, have you thought about it? And he, he said he was heartened by the fact that Aiden Hutchinson, the guy that was so controversial, at least in the minds of Alabama fans that got the finalist call, mm -hmm. finished second in the voting, yeah. a defensive player. I think that bodes well for Will Anderson Jr., who's one of the all-time greats now already at mm -hmm. Alabama. I asked Will Anderson if he remembers or had seen uh, Derek Thomas, who's 
you know, at, at Alabama, it's largely regarded as maybe the greatest edge linebacker there. And he just got this big smile on his face, and he said, yeah, I've seen the film. He knows the comparisons have been made. So he's ha had that big year, National Defensive Player of the Year. If he posts the same numbers again, he's in the minds of the voters. He yes. can win it. Yes. He is 40 to 1 right now, so still a, a lot of good value on Will Anderson Jr. to uh, win that from the defensive side of the ball. Some other teams meeting the media today, uh, not as much ballyhoo uh, as you get with the Alabama Crimson Tide, but South Carolina. Uh, Shane Beamer and, and Spencer Rattler. We'll talk about him in just a second. But for Shane Beamer specifically, won seven games in his first season, impressed a lot of people. What's in store for year two, Dennis? Well, I think more of the same. He now has a quarterback. Uh, I think last year, Shane Beamer is what you want in a coach. You want value. They got a guy with scant head coaching experience, obviously no head coaching experience, and look what he did. He had no quarterback. GA had to go out there for a couple of games, and they win seven games. They win the bowl game. You get value. Now he's got a quarterback. Spencer Rattler comes, comes free at Oklahoma. He's got a, a tight end, Austin Stogler, who came there as well. They came as a package deal. I talked to Spencer Rattler in the offseason. He can't wait to get to South Carolina. So that coaching ability, mm. BMAC, with now a fire starter at quarterback, they're going to get a couple people this season. We're not talking about a division title or anything like that. Yeah. We're talking about maybe eight win territory. No question. If they're able to do that, that's a plus. Remember, they won seven ball games last year. And the thing that I think about South Carolina is going back to their bowl game against UNC. I mean, they played inspired football on both sides. They ran the football extremely well. And one of my favorite players on their team, DeCorian Joyner, DK, had an outstanding game. Remember, he had to play quarterback. He was a wide receiver. And if I'm not mistaken, I think he had 100% what a quarterback rating. He was 6 for 6 or something like that. So they have some pieces. But the most important thing you hit on, uh, Dennis, was the quarterback play. Which Spencer Rattler will they receive there in Columbia? Will it be the guy from his freshman campaign that came with a lot of hype and delivered, had some splashes here or there? A guy that was a bit inconsistent from what we saw last year, his final year at Oklahoma. That is the main ingredient. That is the most important factor to Shane Beamer's success. Which quarterback will show up? for Spen in Spencer Rattler, to say the least. But I like their chances, and I'll come out and say this. We know the East is all about Georgia, right? It's Georgia's world, and everyone else is just living in it. Outside of Georgia, I believe Tennessee has an opportunity to be the second-best team in the East. I think South Carolina, if Spencer Rattler balls out and lives up to the billing, I think they can have a legit chance to be the third-best team in the East. Yeah, real quick on Spencer Rattler, it's not bad getting through the transfer portal, a guy who's completed 70 percent of his passes and is 15 and 2 as a starter so mm -hmm. maybe a redemption for him but any team in the country would take that a guy who was the Heisman favorite at this time last season and looked at as a top five pick in the NFL draft as well we'll see what he can do in his season at South Carolina Mississippi State also meeting the media today Mike Leach went from four wins in year one to seven wins in year two how is year three looking Dennis uh, year three is looking good. I went back and looked at Mike Leach, Mike Leach's record, because I thought, you know, maybe this is the turnaround time for him. It was at Tech. He went nine and four, I think, his third year. But at Washington State, he was three and nine. So mm. there is no trend there. Uh, they've got to get better. They've got to get better defensively. All the offensive metrics were there. Will Rogers set school records yeah. for yards, touchdown passes, completions. Austin Williams looks like a, another Hunter Renfro to me. He's fantastic as an inside slot receiver, a six-year player. But the defense has to get better. And I'll use my cheat sheet here. How about this schedule? How about the schedule they have? At Arizona, okay, Arizona's not great, but it's on the road. In the conference, at LSU, at Kentucky, at Alabama, Georgia, and they've got Old Miss, obviously, at the end of the season. So try to get through that and improve your record. Yeah, they're already playing a very, very difficult schedule just in the West alone, but then they add Georgia to the schedule. So it's going to be a very, very difficult year. If they're successful, you better believe they would have earned it. Uh, seven wins a year ago, as you mentioned. The thing I like about Mississippi State, I'm a Will Rogers fan. I mean, you look at what, he's, what he was able to do last year with 4,000 yards, 30-plus touchdowns, completed around 70% of his passes. He played pretty efficient football considering the opportunities. We know one thing about Mike Leach, throw, throw, throw. And if you look at how accurate Will Rogers was, that's a thing of beauty, and that's something that they potentially can build on. If you look at some 
of their wins last year with Dennis, seven wins, three was, was against ranked opponents. So that was in pretty impressive when you look at Leach and some of the talent that he has there and some of the talent that he has returning. But I'm right there with you. That schedule is going to be very, very difficult. And if they can come out of that schedule on top and maybe get seven or eight wins, I think that's a positive year. Back in the day, you go to a, a conference media day and you talk about that conference. You're focused on that conference specifically. Guys, I mean, it's, it's not that way anymore. Dennis, you continue to drop stories about other conferences as you're there in Atlanta for SEC media days. And last night it was the news that the Big 12 and the Pac-12 are no longer exploring a partnership. Why did that break down and what's next for those conferences? Well, I think the Big 12 didn't see very much value in it, and in a larger perspective, the rights holders didn't see very much value in it. I'm told that wh however the Pac-12 and Big 12 end up this season, or in the future, let me say that, that the money is negligible between the two, mm -hmm. and it's not very much money. It's not what they were making before, and that's part of the problem here. The Pac-12 is running out of options. After this, these talks broke down, there's only a few other options. <laughs> they can try to stay put. I don't think they stay put at 10. One of the options is they go get some teams from the Mountain West, San Diego State, Boise State, what have you. Yep. Not an optimal result. Uh, or they can wait and get picked off by the Big 12. I think that's the next step here. You're going to see the Big 12, in my opinion, go after the four corner schools. Arizona, Arizona State, Utah, Colorado. Sitting out there is Oregon and Washington. If you're a member of the Pac-12 right now, BMAC, why do you agree to a grant of rights? Exactly. You want your options. And right now the Pac-12 is like the kid in the neighborhood that has no friends nobody wants to play with. They're knocking on some of their neighbors' doors. Do you want to come out and play? No. Everyone is telling Pac-12 no because they don't see any value in them, like you said. So it's going to be a very, very difficult, difficult situation for the Pac-12 to join another potential conference, Big 12, ACC, because there's no value with the Pac-12 coming to their said conference. And I'm right there with you. I think other conferences, when you look at the Big 12, the Big 10, and potentially the ACC, they will start plucking other teams away from the Pac-12 because they see an opportunity. And the same can be said for the universities that are currently in the Big, in the Pac-12. They see a better opportunity to change uh, locations and go to another conference. So it's going to be a very, very difficult year for the Pac-12. It will be difficult when it comes to going forward in totality with the Pac-12 because the value is not there compared to some of the other conferences in college football. All right, BMAC, maybe a few years down the road, your Seminoles will head up to Washington and play the Huskies in an ACC battle. How about that? Brian McFadden and Dennis Dodd with us here from <laughs> SEC Media Days on CBS Sports HQ. The cover three guys have, uh, have picks coming uh, as we ramp up to the season. They've uh, recorded some new episodes on uh, win totals for the Pac-12 and the Big 12 specifically. Check it out. Download and follow. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.